Welcome to Movie Insight Global. Today I am going to explain an American science fiction action thriller film called Next. Spoilers ahead. Watch and enjoy. The movie begins by showing Frank in a diner, sitting at the bar. He wears a watch on his left arm, but also looks at the watch that's hanging on the diner's wall. He presses a button on his watch and turns around to look outside. He sees nothing. Next, we see Frank getting on a stage and performing as a small-time magician. The announcer introduces him as Frank Cadillac, the magician who knows what you will do before you do it. Frank walks up to a table and gets a beautiful young woman on the stage with him. The woman is wearing a necklace and Frank says that her necklace will fall into her drink in a couple of seconds. And so, it happens. At the same time, Callie and her partner, Kavanaugh, are watching him. He asks if she is serious about this guy and wonders why they are following magicians around. Frank leaves the stage and walks to a casino. In a voiceover, he narrates that most magicians are fake, but some of them are the real deal. He also says that on Wednesday nights he does not make much money and so he goes gambling. But he keeps it simple and only plays against machines and does not make large bets. That way he can keep coming back. Finally, he reveals that he has the ability to see what is going to happen in the next two minutes. But he is not God and can't predict the general future. He can only see what will happen to him. The casino security is watching over Frank's table while he is playing blackjack and they recognize him as a magician. They wonder if he is pulling tricks on them. They speak on the radio and tell some security guards to go to his table. Frank knows what's coming and gets up from the table. In another voiceover, he says that the thing with the future is that it changes, and it changes because you looked at it, which makes it unpredictable. On his way, Frank sees the short-term future, a guy who attempts robbery and shoots two people with a gun. Back to the present, Frank prevents that guy from carrying out his plan and disarms him. The casino security goes after Frank, but he remains calm and manages to evade all of them. When he exits the casino, the security calls the police and a couple of patrol cars go after Frank. But again, Frank can't be caught. Back at the casino, Callie is reviewing the footage from the casino's cameras and comments that Frank knows exactly what he is doing. She has been watching him for two months and he always finds a way out. The police chief tells her that a bomb has been stolen and they should put every agent looking for it instead of going after some paranormal wizard. Callie tells him that this man does statistically impossible things and if they get him, maybe they can use his abilities. The chief gives Callie a five-day window to get to him and walks away. Frank drives the stolen car into a garage where an old man, Irv, is waiting for him. They play some pool and Frank talks about the dinner. Irv asks if the watch turned back in time but Frank says he didn't notice. In the meantime, Callie is analyzing Frank's moves and comes to the conclusion that Frank must be watching at least one minute and a half ahead in the future. Frank predicts that the police will shortly come in and Irv tells him to run. Frank says he wants to see what they want and waits. Callie walks in alone and asks for his help to find the nuclear bomb. Frank says it doesn't work that way but Callie tells him that he will either help her out or he will be arrested, then the police come in. Frank returns to the present and runs away. The next day, Frank is back at the diner and marks the time. The woman he's been waiting for, Liz, walks in and gets a table. Shortly, her ex-boyfriend walks in as well and starts harassing her. Frank takes a peek into the future and decides what the best course of action would be. He interrupts her ex-boyfriend's mumbling and he stands still in order to get punched. He introduces himself as Chris, which is his real name, and says that his car was stolen. Liz offers to give him a ride. In the car, they have a talk about destiny. Liz says she does not know if destiny is a real thing, and she does not really want to know, as life should be a surprise. Chris says that would be nice. Back at the diner, Callie and Kavanaugh are questioning two of the employees. The employees reveal that Chris visited the diner every day at the same time and ordered a martini while waiting. That was until today when he met with that woman and they left together. Callie and Kavanaugh walk out and they have some information that some other people are after Chris as well. We see the terrorists who are having a part of the bomb delivered to them. They speak about Chris and they say they need to get him. At night, some construction workers are trying to clear the road of the mountain rocks. They tell Chris and Liz that they can't drive any further until the morning. 
they tell them to drive back to a motel nearby. Chris and Liz visit the motel and get a room. Liz will sleep in the room while Chris will sleep in the car. At the FBI headquarters, Callie and Kavanaugh have spotted Chris. The chief calls everybody and says they have a code read about the nuclear bomb. Callie says that this point in time is critical and they need to direct all of their resources toward arresting Chris. They know where he is and they can get him. The terrorists notice that the police are mobilizing and they order their people to follow the police cars as they will lead them to Chris. Back at the motel, Liz walks out of the shower and Chris gazes at her. He comes up with a magic trick and burns a paper into a flower. He gives her the flower and they kiss. They become intimate with each other. When they are finished, they are laying together in each other's arms. Liz says that maybe there is such a thing as destiny after all. Callie and Kavanaugh are watching the motel. They see Liz walking out of there and Callie says they should give her a head start. Liz walks into town and Callie parks the car near her. Callie introduces herself as an NSA agent and wants to have a talk with her. Liz gets in the car and Callie shows her the footage from the casino. She tells Liz that Chris used her to escape from Las Vegas. He is a sociopath but a powerful one because he can see two minutes into the future. Callie asks for Liz's help. She gives her a narcotic pill and tells her to slip it into Chris' drink. But she has to do it two minutes after she gets Chris out of the room. Liz agrees to help them and returns to the motel room. When Chris gets into the bathroom to shave, Liz prepares some breakfast and slips the pill into Chris' juice. Chris comes out and hugs her. He takes the juice and he's ready to drink it. Liz can't stand that to happen and stops him, telling him everything that happened a few moments ago. She asks Chris if it's true and Chris admits it. He tells her about the incident in the casino and proves that his abilities are real by predicting what the television will be broadcasting when he switches to the next channel. He tells Liz that he does not know how it works, but it does, he was born with it. Liz asks him if he has been using his ability on her and set her up. Chris says no. He tells her that he saw her before he actually saw her in real life. That's why he has been waiting in that diner for her until she finally appeared for real. Chris tells her that the police want his help but he can't really help them. Liz tells him that he was able to expand his abilities when it came to her and Chris says the police do not know that. Chris devises a plan so he and Liz can both escape, but things go sideways. Chris gets arrested because of his good heart since he couldn't let Callie die. To make matters worse, Liz is kidnapped by the terrorists. Callie takes Chris to the FBI headquarters and tells him that he has no choice but to help them. She makes him watch the news and tells him to push himself as hard as he can and see where the nuclear bomb will detonate. But instead of the bomb, Chris sees that Liz has been kidnapped and they will place her on the roof of a parking lot while wearing a vest full of explosives. He sees a reporter covering the action and the explosives detonate, killing Liz. Chris tells Callie that he can't work like that and begs her to set him free. Callie orders a couple of men to guide Chris to his cell but Chris is able to escape. He escapes the headquarters and runs all the way to that parking lot roof. Callie catches up with him and asks him why he came here. Chris tells her that they got Liz and they are going to execute her. Chris and Callie devise a new plan. Chris walks out to the roof so the sniper of the terrorists can spot him and shoot him. Things go on as planned and Chris pretends he is dead while the police kill the sniper. Callie says that the terrorists will now think Chris is dead and they can use that to their advantage. Chris says that no matter how many possible scenarios he runs into his mind, Liz always ends up dead. They have to do something else. Chris pushes himself hard and looks further into the future, until the moment when the terrorists bring Liz to the roof in a white van. He is able to see the license plates and tells Callie about it. The police are able to spot the van and Chris lays out yet another action plan. He and the police will have to go to the docks and get to Liz before they take her to that roof. Chris helps the police navigate through the docks and they eliminate most of the terrorists. Only three of them remain and they take Liz into a large ship. Chris helps the police once more and they are able to take them out one by one and save Liz. Callie says they are not done yet and they need to find the nuclear bomb. Chris says that he made a mistake about the bomb, it is going to explode now. The bomb explodes and kills them all. Chris wakes up back in the motel, holding Liz into his arms.
He gets up and gives Callie a call. He says he will help prevent the nuclear disaster, but they need to leave Liz out of it, and Callie agrees to that. Chris wakes Liz up and tells Liz there is something he needs to do, something that he can't put off any longer. She asks him if he is going to be back and Chris replies yes. Chris waits for Callie and another voiceover of his reminds us that every time you look into the future, it changes. In the last scene, Callie pulls her car to pick him up and they drive away together. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe the channel.